Okay, this is part one of lab two. We're working with the operational amplifiers and we are doing the inverting amplifier and the non-inverting amplifier. So before we get started, um, we're gonna be using the LM741s or the UA741s, which are pretty much equivalent. Um, so pay attention to the pinout when you're gonna set up your circuit. Uh, but first, let's start with a power supply here. I need to set up my power supply so that I can get plus and minus a voltage. Uh, and I'm gonna use 20 volts. So all you really need to do is make sure that your V-set for two channels are set to an equivalent value. Uh, in this case, I'm using plus and minus 20 volts. And in order to get 20 volts on channel two, or negative 20 volts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to force this to be common ground for both channels. Now this, uh, from this point to this point, we are now gonna get 20 volts. So we can test that really quick. And if I set my output on, I measure the voltage here on channel one to this point, I get 20 volts on the multimeter. If I measure from this point to this point, I get negative 20. And the connections on the yellow wire are going to be my common ground. So what does that do for me? When I set up my breadboard, I'm gonna do a few things here. So the way I have it set up is that this top rail will be the positive 20 volts and this bottom positive rail will be my negative 20 volts. And then negative on either end is gonna be ground. So if you see my connections here, I go from ground to negative and I jump it across to the negative power rail here. And I set up my positive, which is gonna be VA on this power rail. And that has to do with the pinouts on the LM741, so pay careful attention. Um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and make my connections here on the power supply. I'm going to treat this as my negative VB and this will be ground. Okay. So I more or less have everything established here. Now, again, you should pay careful attention to the pinouts. I have uh, the uh, pinout for ground connected here, also for the negative voltage supply. And I already have my circuit configured for an inverting amplifier. And we're shooting for approximately a gain of negative 15. If it's a little bit different, it's not a big deal. In my case, uh, I think my gain comes out to like 14.8. Uh, part of the lab is that you should measure your values as well and compare what the theoretical gain would be with nominal values versus the real measured values. So let's see what's going on here. Let me, um, for the very first part, we're trying to understand the gain as a function of frequency. So if I'm doing frequency, my input is not going to be a, a DC input, DC voltage input, it's going to be an AC voltage input, right? Now, one thing we wanna do with the power supply, I already have it started up and I have a set of function generator leads connected. And remember, these are the function generator leads. They terminate with a BNC connection and they have a positive and a negative. Okay, but one thing I need to do is from the top menu, let's move this aside. From the top menu, I need to change the, the load impedance on this so that it knows it's encountering a very high impedance. Because remember, this function generator is providing a voltage into an op amp, which we say has a very high impedance, ideally infinite, but in reality, it's some very high number. So what I do here is in top menu, I go to output menu and notice that it has the selection for load impedance. So I hit load impedance and high Z. Now I've already selected that because I had this set up. But make sure you change this to high Z and you can just go back to your channel one. Um, and then we're gonna make our frequency selections, right? So I'm starting at 10 Hertz. 
uh, but you should remember you hit frequency and then type in 10 and then hit the metric prefix corresponding to Hertz. And in the case of my amplitude, I hit amplitude, one volt, and I hit that. Okay, so I'm going to connect my function generator to the input on my circuit here. And this is going to be connected to ground. And I've just connected this small wire here so that I have a, a common grounding point for everything. And let's start with making sure from our channel one on our oscilloscope that we're getting the intended voltage that we want for the input. So I'm gonna back this up here, raise this, let's see. I'm not gonna be able to keep the circuit in view, but you can probably see what's going on. This uh, positive, the uh, positive flip is going to go to my input. So I basically just match it at the same location where the positive on the fun function generator lead is. And this just grounds here at the same point as the ground on the function generator lead. Okay, so if I turn this on, I'm gonna turn on my power supply. So my op amp is functioning. I'm gonna disable this channel on the oscilloscope for now. And I'm going to turn on the output on the function generator. So normally with the oscilloscope, 10 Hertz is such a low frequency that the auto set doesn't work. So I scale it manually here. If I make this kind of a long time period here, it starts picking up the signal. And here I can see that I'm getting about one volt and about 10 Hertz. So that's great. Okay, we have a second channel enabled. And notice that I've already added uh, peak to peak value and frequency for both channels. So based on lab one, hopefully you have some experience with that or you can refer to it. Or also refer to the user manual on the, uh, that we provide in Canvas. So, okay, I have channel two enabled and I'm simply going to connect this to the output, which based on the pinout is the end of this resistor here. And let's see what's going on with the oscilloscope. Okay, let me rescale this a little bit here. Okay, so I have one volt going into my input and about 15.2 volts uh, going into my output. So from there I can calculate my gain, right? All we gotta do now is, according to that section of the lab, is change the frequency. So let me see if I can get both in frame here. So now I go to 100 hertz, I believe it is. And I can rescale this here. Again, I check what my voltage is. Input is channel one, one volt, uh, and 15.2 on the output. And I just keep going up. And if you feel like it, you can just use auto set instead. It oftentimes makes things easier. Still the same, and I keep recording these values, right? So eventually we get to somewhere like, um, I think we use 80,000. And 80,000 kilohertz. So let me auto set there. And we notice a substantial change in the voltage now. So we have a different gain. So as you collect these values, you'll be calculating the gain and uh, and uh, recording that. Um, so it's pretty simple as long as you remember to keep changing the frequency and observing the input voltage and then recording that output voltage. Uh, you'll notice some things that we haven't talked about. There's actually a phase change going on. So these are not just 90 degrees apart like a normal in inverter. Um, so we can discuss those at another time but for now we're just trying to understand the real op amp behavior. And um, the next part, I'm going to talk about the multi-sim portion for the inverting amplifier. Okay, multi-sim portion. So this is pretty simple. Um, we kind of know uh, what we have to do here. It's replicating what we did for the experiment, right? So I set up my op-amp configuration for the inverting amplifier. 
and um, I basically just have a voltage output and a voltage input. And I can simply change through these frequencies and record the value of each and calculate my gain. So if you look here on the lab, we started with the experimental portion and then we do the multi sim method, right? So that's pretty simple. Just an interactive mode. I can run my simulation and see my voltage output and my voltage input. So if I change my values, let's go to 5,000 hertz. I stop that, run it again. The value changes every, ever so slightly. And as I go through this, through these different frequencies, in this case it's 60,000, start the simulation again, I'll observe different voltage outputs. Now, in this case, I'm just looking at the magnitude. Um, we're not recording anything regarding phase, but basically, I want to keep track of that. Eventually, um, what we want to do is tabulate these results into something like this. Right? We can get our multi-sim values, our experimental results, and then compare. So here I have gain plotted as a function of frequency, and I can simply add that into my report, and we get a sense for how they differ. So uh, it's really pretty easy. Uh, just make sure you configure the 741 op amp and multi-sim properly, uh, providing 20 and negative 20 at the right supply rails. I did a few things here, like instead of using a bunch of ground, I just named something ground so I know it stayed consistent. And again, just recording these values. So a little bit time consuming, but really not too bad. So that concludes the inverting amplifier portion of this experiment. Okay, so this is the non-inverting amplifier portion. And uh, let me just explain the basic setup. I have this set up to just do a voltage measurement on my benchtop multimeter. You can use the handheld, whatever you want. Now, on my power supply, I essentially have the same setup as before, except now I'm gonna use channel three as my input signal, right? We're not using an AC signal. Now we're just using a DC input signal. And all I have to do for that is, um, according to the lab, I have to give a variety of input signals ranging from negative five to positive five, and, um, and then measure the output. So if I look at my circuit, it's essentially set up very similar to before, but now we're doing a inverting or non-inverting amplifier with a gain of about 6.5. So let's see what we can do here. So I'll try to place my circuit a little bit closer here. And there's nothing really special I have to do here. If I want positive signal or a positive voltage, I'm gonna have my positive connected like normal, right? And if I want my negative, I can just flip these around. So I'm gonna set this to common ground on my circuit that we established before is over at this wire here on the corner and I'm going to set the multimeter probes to the output. So this positive side is gonna to go to the output, and this is going to go to ground, okay. So let's turn on this output here. Currently I'm applying five volts on into the input signal and I get an output, right? So I should measure that. And then we gradually go through our uh, series of steps for the voltage. For example, uh, the next one is 4.0. Uh, I just hit enter. Observe the output still. So we should note this down, the input and the output. Then I can go to three. Okay, note these down. And then I think it's two, uh, sorry, two, note the output. I go to 1.5, note the output, 0 0.0. So I'm just changing the channel three voltage gradually and observing what the output is here on the voltage, the voltage output. So I keep recording these, and with that we can observe the linear and saturation region of our operational amplifier, right? Because we don't have, we're limited by the supply rails, and uh, so we're not always gonna get an infinite uh, gain, right? 
So the next step is if I need to supply a negative voltage, like for example, right now I have positive one volt, if I need to supply negative, all I need to do is flip these around. It's as simple as that. Now I have a negative voltage and I can observe my output given negative one volt, right? So again, just increasing this, as I provide two volts, I get a different output. I can bump this up to negative 2.5, I get a different output. And then there's some point at which it stops increasing, even though my channel three keeps increasing. So just a quick explanation of that, and then I'll show you the multi-sim next. But if you already did the part one, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so this portion, we're just doing the same experiment that we did physically in multi-sim, right? So we had a non-inverting amplifier configuration of a certain gain. You determined what resistors you needed to use. You went through these different DC voltages and you observed the DC uh, voltage output, right? And here we can just do the same thing in multi-sim. So if I change this voltage value, which I'm using V, V E E. Um, I can just type in whatever DC voltage and observe the output. So if I type in negative three or negative two. Now I'm going to show you eventually a less tedious way to do this, but for now we're going to do it the rough simulation method. So um, it's pretty simple. Again, just observe your voltage input, record your voltage output, and then we can generate a plot and compare. Right, so if I look at my experimental and my multi-sim results, I can see how far apart they are. So hopefully you're familiar enough with multi-sim to do this at this point. Um, we ask you to draw a circuit diagram, provide a picture of your breadboard, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, if you need any further clarification, just uh, ask your instructors.